a very disappointing ending. They are going to lose again. For Barry Sanders. In 1995, Sanders and the Lions suffered their fourth straight playoff defeat. If you haven't gotten yourself to the Super Bowl, uh, there's an empty feeling inside. And I can tell you from, from this very moment on uh, that that's going to be the direction and the goal of our football program uh, here with the Detroit Lions. Down inside the 40, the Lions never get close again. Fireworks! Oh, they're so happy they're going to Venus. The Bucks ecstatic. Barry Sanders not. Tony Dungy, one for one in the playoffs. Instead of sweating in Saginaw at Lions training camp, Barry Sanders is vacationing in London. And as far as football is concerned, might as well be for good. Only one average Sanders season away from breaking the NFL's all-time rushing record, the 31-year-old today announced he is retiring from pro football after 10 seasons. The game's most elusive running back has his reasons, and apparently making more money is not among them. The statement now from Sanders, and it went like this, my desire to exit the game is greater than my desire to remain in it. I have searched my heart through and through and feel comfortable with this decision. I leave on good terms with everyone in the organization. I am not involved in a salary dispute of any kind. If I had played this season, I would have earned a more than satisfactory salary. And Sanders continued, shortly after the end of last season, I felt that I probably would not return for the 1999-2000 season. I also felt that I should take as much time as possible to sort through my feelings and make sure my feelings were backed with conviction. Johnson and Robert Porsche get into it, and Johnson takes down Porsche. Oh, you know Rob's going to hear about that in the locker room. A pileup occurs during the melee. Trey Johnson, the pro bowler, restrained, takes a swing, but he accidentally hits back judge Bill Lowry in the head. Levy. Levy is stunned. Referee Bob McElroy says, Johnson, you're gone. What do we have? WCW wrestling here? Johnson got caught for a personal foul and got kicked out of the game. Ugly incident and an ugly day for the Lions. Redskins beat them 27-13. Bears punt. Under a minute to go. Chase scrambling. And it's R.W. McQuarters, who is now a $100 bill, makes the hit. Fumble. Roosevelt Coleman recovers for Chicago. This is from Michigan State. He's going to come into the Silverdome. Paul Edinger, 54-yard field goal. Good! Good! The Bears win! The Lions are gone! And while Detroit is stunned, after the game was over in New Orleans, the Rams saw this on the big screen, and they celebrate! The coaches, the players, and they say to the stands, we'll be back next week. Rams and Saints next week because Detroit lost to the Chicago Bears. Matt Mellon, new president, CEO, Detroit Lions. Really, I've been thinking about this opening statement for a long, long time. And, and, and I, just, I, I, I just have a, a quick opening statement. The bar is high. <laughs> Hell, it's even higher. It's even higher. 17, we go to overtime. Now pay attention. Detroit wins the toss. They give the Bears the ball. Detroit takes the win. Bears, third and eight. He completes the Dustin Lyman, but holding penalty on the Bears. And so on third and eight, Marty Morningwhite says, yeah, we'll take the penalty, give him third and 18 rather than have the punt. Miller to Marty Booker. Now that's 15 yards. Enter on the sidelines, because remember, it'd be a long field goal into the win would be about a 48-yarder. So fourth and three from the 31, and wouldn't you know it, Miller to White for five yards, first down Bears. Three running plays, 40-yard field goal, Edinger. Good. The Lions win the toss, but never get the ball. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I had... Bears and Lions were so interesting this year that they went into overtime both times. Stop. <laughs> we couldn't get enough of them. This time the Bears went into snap an eight-game losing streak. Well, you just wonder what the situation had to be with the win in order for you to give that ball away. I would think that you'd be looking at a snowstorm or a wind 40 Rain miles an hour before you give that ball away.
I'm here with my favorite coach, Steve Mariucci. Coach, you how you doing? You say that to everybody, don't you? I don't. You are my favorite coach. That's there why you're you on it. my show all the time. <laughs> See, I don't lie. But of course... It's I'm... all over in Detroit and very little for the Detroit Lions to be thankful for today. The Atlanta Falcons over the Lions today, 27-7. to Mike Vick, 12 of 22, 146 yards, two touchdowns. Thought he had one here to Justin Griffith. However... The review showed Griffith down at the one yard line, only delayed the inevitable because TJ Duckett went in from one yard out a moment later to make it a 10 0 Falcon lead. And then Vic on the play action, rolling left, Algie Crumpler, six yards in the first of the two touchdowns that those two hooked up for. This one, a 32 yarder. The Falcons rush for 256 touchdowns in a pick. And Jeff Garcia looking for Roy Williams here, just as it's drawn up. On the board, D'Angelo Hall deflected it. You have right. Keon Carpenter <laughs> tipped it. Roy Williams grabbed it. 27 to seven. Atlanta. Just, uh, related to what's happened to you, getting a little bit better at it. Are you a player's coach, Dick? And what do you think that means, a player's coach? A player's coach uh, carries a connotation. Uh, at times, it's it's negative. Uh, and so, no, I don't. If it's negative, no, I don't. Right. Uh, well, I think people think the players coach might mean he's easy on players. Yeah, I players definitely, I, I've never felt that I was easy on players. I think our practices have always been demanding. I think they've been smart. Pittsburgh won early. The Bengals playing late. If they win, they win the division. But the issue in Detroit, well, last home game this year, and they want it to be the... And look at it. Matt Millen watches and look, Matt's not happy. Matt was a great football player. It has it worked. They haven't won under interim coach Dick Duran after they fired Steve Mariucci. And Carson Palmer had a bad game last week. Look at that. Chad, Chad just here. He huh? didn't know what to do with it. Here you go. I, 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 I like it. it. Way to go, Chad. <laughs> Very quickly, it's 17 nothing. Here's Carson. To TJ, you say who's Manzada? I say who's Manzada. And now it's uh, 30 touchdown passes this season for Carson Palmer. That's a franchise record. Second and nine Lions. Now, we got to say this. Cincinnati picked up Minnesota five times, Chicago five times, Green Bay five times, and in this trip through the Norris Division, three times against the Lions. That's Delta O'Neill, his 10th of the year and that's the congratulations to Marvin Lewis in 1988 and 1981 two Super Bowl years for the Bengals they were 12 and 4 well they have a chance to surpass it or at least tie it as Cincinnati sliced and diced the Detroit Lions the there was the Millen Man March outside of a Lions Bengals game that was funny that was Rob Parker the Millen Man March. I've told him that. It was very clever. Matt understood why fans were angry. Fire Millen became a way of greeting somebody practically as you walked down the street. They would just say Fire Millen to each other as a nod of hello. And uh, yeah, the football thing, man, 2007, we're rolling. We're six and two. We're six and two. And the bottom falls out, you know, because, you know, to be honest, our staff couldn't get along. You know, people were against Mike and they couldn't get along. And that's what happens. We're rolling. Calvin is going great. Roy Williams is going great. Mike Furry's going great. Kevin Jones is running great. Our offensive line is playing great. Sean, Sean, uh, uh, Sean Rogers is, you know, at the halfway point, going to be the defensive player of the year. You know, we're, we're rolling. But our staff couldn't get along. And our season went in the tank. Falcons opening at home against Detroit, showcasing rookie Matt Ryan and Michael Burner Turner. Here is Ryan's first career pass attempt in an NFL regular season game, and it's a 62 yard touchdown to Michael Jenkins. An absolute BB right on the money from Matty Ice. Ryan, 9 of 13, 161 in the score. By the way, Michael Bishop in 2000, former Patriot great, last quarterback to throw a touchdown in his first NFL pass. Here's Turner busting tackles for 66. It's 14 nothing Falcons. Who knew? Still in the first. Turner again. 
his second touchdown of the quarter. The Lions defense allowed the Falcons an Atlanta record 318 rushing yards. Five minutes left. Turner again, and on this run, sets a Falcons single game rushing record, breaking Gerald Riggs' mark. 22 carries, 220 yards, and two touchdowns. Falcons roll 34-21. Matt Millen refuses to quit. I think that's why he succeeded as much as he did as a player. You can't make me quit. You can't do it. It's impossible. William Clay Ford wants to win so much, but he wants to win with his guys, and he had great affection for Matt. I feel bad for him. I want him to win in the worst way. I have a great affinity for Mr. Ford. The opinions of millions of other people in this state meant nothing. Those two qualities are why Matt stayed as long as he did. In 2008, with the Lions on their way to the only 0-16 season in NFL history. Millen was fired after a week three loss to the 49ers. So, we have our first 0-16 team, John Lynch. You ever think you would see it? I never thought I would. I, you know, games are hard to win in this, in, in this uh, league, but it's a league set up for parity. The Lions, how they got themselves into this mess, they had the number one, you know, top ten picks over and over and over. They missed completely. Not only they miss, I mean, you got guys like Ernie Sims. People may not be happy with how far he's come, but he's still playing at a high level. You can't have guys like Mike Williams, Charles Rogers that are no longer in the league. You can't have Joey Harrington who's the number three quarterback down in New Orleans. You can't miss that bad. That is the final snap of the season. Here at Lambeau Field. And the O in Motown officially stands for O in 16, the first of its kind in NFL history. For John Lynch, I'm Chris Rose. Packers a winner. And welcome back to Football Night America. Dan Patrick along with Matt Millen, who spent 10 years in uh, the broadcast booth. Prior to that, he spent 12 years in the NFL. He won four Super Bowls. Eight years ago, joined the Detroit Lions as the president of that franchise. Now, you've since been fired after three games into this season. They went 0-16. What was your reaction to that 0-16? Oh, it was brutal. You know, obviously knowing everybody up there and being so intimate and knowing and understanding the details and then watching it unfold, it was, it was probably harder watching it from home than it was when you were up there because at least when you're up there, you have some interaction. At home, you're just sitting there and your wife just keeps on beating on you, so it's tough. What, uh, how responsible were you for this season and uh, the last eight years there? Oh, completely responsible. I mean, when you were... Head of football operations, you, you throw it back on me. I mean, you can say something about the coaching. You can say something about the, about the players. But inevitably, I'm responsible for them. And so I'm completely responsible for it in my mind. Were you qualified to take that job in the first place? In some areas, yes. In some areas, no. Certainly from a football point of view and the X's and O's, and that's something that you study for a long time and you understand. But there's, you know, there's a whole other side to that job. Um, that uh, you have to learn. And uh, frankly, I, I didn't understand it going in. I had to learn it. Welcome back. Among mixed reviews this week, the Lions promoted Tom Lewan to team president and Martin Mayhew to general manager. Both men have been in the organization during the past eight years. However, both say they feel like they can turn it around. It's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Look at a team that was 0-16, and, and that's in the past. We go forward. Uh, but to be able to have the opportunity to turn that team around and make that team a championship team is something special. Um, and I believe we have the capability of being able to, uh, to uh, get that done. Both Lawan and Mayhew worked under Matt Millen. Many Lions fans think this is a big mark against them. And don't judge me by who my friends are or, or how I got here. Judge me by, by my actions, you know. And that's, you know, to me, at the end of the day, that's, that's what it's about. It's about what happens here. One of the great lessons that I would never wish upon anybody in going through an 0-16 season is finding out the character of people in the building, whether that's the locker room, the coaching staff, the front office, the scouting department. We learned a tremendous amount of, about the people we have in this building, and there are a lot of very good ones. With so many names floating around out there, neither LaWanda or Mayhew would discuss a lead candidate to replace Rod Marinelli. It's an internal search. Uh, Martin and I are, are conducting it, uh, and it began in earnest yesterday, as I said, with the, the uh, uh, request that we sent out to several clubs.
and we're scheduling interviews right now, and they'll, they'll begin this week. I think you have to have a head coach who agrees with your philosophy. I think that's part of it. I think that's where we struggle some here in the past. You know, I, I think uh, sometimes it hasn't always matched up what we're doing offensively and what we're doing defensively and what our president and CEO's philosophy was versus what we were trying to do on the football field didn't always match up. The Lions already announced that some ticket prices will freeze and others will drop, but more needs to be done to regain fans' faith in the team. Our words are just that. The thing that we can say to our fans out there is not that our words are going to change 0-16. Our actions are going to change 0-16. Detroit, it's now Jim Schwartz's responsibility to turn around the Lions on Friday. The team introduced him as their new head coach. Schwartz signed a four-year deal worth about 11 million bucks. And during the press conference, he shared about his upbringing, talking about the lessons that he learned from his father, who was a Baltimore policeman. I'm a blue-collar kid, and uh, I'm glad to be here in Detroit, and uh, hopefully, um, We'll, we'll put a team on the field that, uh, that Detroit will be proud of. You'll be proud of the way we play. I can't speak of the past. You know, I'm here right now. I'm not here to, um, you know, to exercise any ghosts. There's no better, better feeling in football than turning a situation around. That's what, that's what drives me here. The airport is quieter than it is in the Superdome. 68,000 ready to rock and roll tonight as Matthew Stafford leads his Detroit Lions into the Bayou to take on Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints in this NFC wild card playoff matchup. Thank you, Michelle, but still a ton of weapons at the disposal of one Drew Brees. Look at those numbers it's from the 20 with the Houdat champ. Said his dad said, that's great, but let's wait and see what you do in a competitive situation. <laughs> That's answered. And then it's picked off at the 50-yard line by Jabari Greer. And he has a blog in the Times Picayune, and he'll be blogging about that this week. And the Detroit Lions see their season end at seven straight playoff losses for Detroit. But as we say, the future looks pretty bright in Motown. We finally wrap up the hefty, hefty scent sack filled with your lion season, and we take it to the camp. <laughs> Guys, I, I, I got to tell you, you know, oftentimes I've uh, I've been in the state since '98. Uh, I took my job down here at the end of '03, and even though I've been around here for a while, and I, I think I have an idea of the way things work, you know, it's it's it, I'll never change the way I'm wired. So when I say to you what I'm going to say to you, I just want you to understand. I'm not like you guys in a lot of ways, okay? My mind is still blown that someone was not marched out there at Allen Park and fired today. Whether, I'll put that away, will you please? Whether it be Linehan, whether it be Cunningham, whether it be Crossman, whether it be Schwartz, whether it be Mayu, somebody needed to lose their job today, period. You went four and 12. You were awful. Half this roster is walking out the door via free agency. But it's business as usual. Oh, uh, okay. You know, how about you just answer the question simply, are you back next year? But here's the problem. And I'll throw the number out, 248-539-9797. This is why you're the Detroit Lions. This is why. There are multiple coaches with Super Bowls on their resume who lost their job today. Meanwhile, you got a guy at 22 and 42 that lost eight straight games this season coming back. I don't believe the Mortensen report. I don't believe any of it. I don't believe that he's being evaluated. What's that evaluation process mean? Hey, Jimmy, you still want to coach her? Yes, I do. Okay, evaluation. Andy Reid was whacked today. Lovey Smith was whacked today. You got guys who have credibility in this league. And you know what? You got teams that are being proactive about it. It didn't take the Browns five minutes to pick up the phone and get Andy Reid and Hecker together to probably make that marriage happen. I'm making a point to you that's real simple. I'm not calling for everybody to be fired left and right. I can't do it. Don't know enough behind the scenes of whether everyone should lose a job. But on a day like today, there should have been blood. 
And whether Scott Linehan lost this job or Cunningham or your coach or your GM, one, two, three, all, somebody should have lost their job today. What happened this fall at Ford Field was an out-and-out -out embarrassment. It was an embarrassment. You went 4-12. and 12. You won exactly one game where you played with a lead and did your job. The other three wins you had in there were all last-second miraculous. I want to hear from you because I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. I don't know how the Lions operate the way they do. But how do you have a head coach at his end-of-season presser telling you we ran the ball well? Really? Oh, Matthew Stafford's got no problem. No, no mechanical problems at all. He's got great mechanics. Really? Looks a lot different than last year. And doing the sidearm Susie all the time. You can't handle it. Got Cliff Averill in the locker room saying he thinks it's a great team. Great. Read Terry's column in the news. Terry did a nice job. Go read that. You got players with the audacity to say the word great in the midst of a 4-12 and season. You know why? You know why it's allowed? You know why it's tolerated? You know why guys feel comfortable doing it? Because it's the Lions. That's why. It's one of the only places in all the sports you could do this stuff. 4-12, and 12, a coach who's 22 and 42. Everybody's back. Meanwhile, you got other teams who've accomplished a lot more. They're whacking people left and right. I don't think Lovey Smith is a great coach. I think he's a hell of a lot better than Schwartz. I think he's got four or five, ten win seasons. I think he's got a Super Bowl. You know what? It's credibility. Andy Reid went to five NFC title games. Went to a Super Bowl. Played in a brutal NFC East. I'm not saying Andy Reid is an unbelievable, great, slam dunk Belichick coach. I'm not saying that. I'm making a point to you that there are guys with winning records losing their jobs. Meanwhile, Schwartz went 4-12 and 12 and didn't win a game in two months. Two months. We get Ken Wisenhunt went to a Super Bowl. He's gone. There you go. Three Super Bowl coaches say let go. Meanwhile, you sit here, you, not me. I don't like this tape. I'm not a Lions fan. I never will be. We all know this. I barely like my own team, the Giants. You're going to sit there, you, in your car, in your cubicle, in your man cave, you. You're going to keep shelling out money, and you're going to keep getting the same product. And you know what? If you think Schwartz should stay, I'm not going to yell at you. If you think me, you should stay, fine. Then pop a coordinator. Okay? 248-539-9797. It's on you guys. You're the fans. You support this team. You explain to me how the Lions keep operating this way. And maybe, you know what? Maybe you don't want anyone gone. Maybe you and Cliff April hang out, and you think this is a great football team. I'll tell you what this football team is. They were fake last year, and they were awful this year. No, you probably weren't 10-6 and six last year. You were fake. You're probably an 8-18. Eight eight and you know what, this year? You're probably not 4-12. You're really 6-10. and 10. Either way, as Matt Derry would say, just not going to get it done. Not good enough. I don't know how long you're going to hold on to the Matt Millen stuff. I don't know how long we're going to hold on to, well, maybe he's cleaning up somebody else's mess. The fourth year, you don't go 4-12. and 12. Otherwise, it's time to empty the dust buster and hand it to somebody else. So you tell me, guys. You tell me where you'd like to go with this, because it's going to be you paying for it, not me. It's going to be you living and dying with it, not me. I would have given up on this years ago. Years ago. I marvel at what you guys do. You are amazing human beings. wondered if it would be coming, and in fact, Lions ownership has decided to make a change. Jim Schwartz becomes the fifth head coach yes. to be let go today. So it has been a bloody day for the head coaches here on the Monday after the season. Jim Schwartz becomes the latest one. This is a team that had the division in front of it this year. The Green Bay Packers lost Aaron Rodgers. The Chicago Bears lost Jay Cutler. The Detroit Lions were in prime position to win that division, and they still couldn't get it done to the point where the Lions decided, even though Jim Schwartz had two years and close to $12 million remaining on his contract, they decided to go a different direction and make a change. And that, what was the room? What was the mood of the room? What was Jim's emotion? I mean, it's tough. Um, we put a lot of hard work into this. Um, 
players, coaches, you know, everybody. Um, for five years, he's been here and done a great job of, you know, from where we were in 2008 to where we are now is, is a big difference. Uh, you know, we owe a lot of that to him. He, Ultimately, now that it's done, what was his grasp of this locker room like when people on the outside said maybe there were discipline issues or he didn't have control? What was it really like in here? Uh, you know, I've, I've only played for one, you know, head coach in the NFL, obviously, with Coach Schwartz, and um, I felt like we had a great locker room, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, not always what, what everybody hears on the outside, and, and like you're saying, so it was, uh, it was a, a joy to play for him. It was fun. Matt, there definitely appears to be talent here. That's what everybody says, obviously. What would it take to tie it all together? What, what, it, what is missing that the talent has been tied together? Because obviously the coach is part of it. Um, I'm sorry. Can you? What, what would it take to tie all this talent together? What, what, what is missing? Um, I don't know. You know, I think. Uh, Obviously, you know, we can add more players and, and more pieces. And, and um, you know, obviously we'll have somebody, uh, you know, somebody else leading the charge. Here and, of course, Caldwell with the Colts. So he's had some really good quarterbacks, including Flacco last year at the end when he was promoted to coordinator. This year, maybe a step back for Flacco or at least that team. I'll start, I'll start with you with the whole coaching dynamic and, and, and the fit that you think Caldwell is with the Lions. Well, I talked to Tony Dungy this morning, and Dungy was obviously the head coach, and Jim yep. Caldwell was on that staff. And he told me that there's no question that Jim Caldwell is the best fit for this job, that he has everything that the Lions are looking for and everything that team needs to take the next step. I love you. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. I love you. I love you. Isn't it great to be back in the playoffs? It's fun. A hungry pack of lions charged at the Great Wall of Dallas. The fortress started to crack. Romo seven step drop and flushed out and buried. And Romo never had a chance. You're not talking about a guy beating a block, you're talking about a guy not being blocked. Detroit had many obstacles to overcome. For 15 minutes, neither the sun nor the crowd posed any problem. Stafford stepping up, throws, got a man wide open at the 25. It's Golden Tate at the 15. Golden Tate at the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Stafford to take 51 yards on the connection. He turns, gives to Reggie. Reggie dances left. Reggie shakes him out at the 15. To the edge. Reggie 10. Reggie 5. Reggie end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Reggie Bush dances for 18 yards. And the Lions are up two scores. How about that? How about a 99-yard drive in 14 plays? So did the Cowboys. Third and 12, and Romo in the gun. Throws it over the middle, and there's Williams. Broke away to the 50. He's left to the 40. He's running at the 30. Down to the 15. Keep running hard. Goal line. Touchdown, Cowboys. Maybe that'll open the door. He did. The Cowboys stormed to within three. Minutes left. The Lions needed one more drive to put the game away. Incomplete. No flag. There it is. Yes, sir. Pettigrew is the intended receiver. Anthony Hitchens. Tonight's been on us. Every single penalty's been on us tonight. Every single penalty. Wow. Boy, that was late. Have you ever seen that call picked up? That's unbelievable! That's unbelievable, and you know it. You know it is, though. I know. How does that get overturned? How does that get overturned? It's, yes, he did face guard him, but there's no contact before the ball arrived. Okay? I understand, but your man saw it and threw the penalty. But we can't face guard. I understand that. But there was no contact. But he's, I've he's never in the him. history seen one but turned over. Yeah. Congratulations, man. First time in the history that's happened. Four-man rush, they pick it up. Romo looking around, nowhere to go. Romo throws it in the end zone. Williams, touchdown! The Cowboys have their first lead of the game. And 
This was a great play by Romo. Buy all the time you want, and he did. With 2.32 to play, Dallas leads 24 to 20. Matthew Stafford, a half an hour away from Highland Park High School, where he set all sorts of records. Here it goes, here's your ball game. Fourth and three. He's sacked! He's sacked! The ball game is going to be over! Lawrence came away with the ball. The Cowboys are going to go to Green Bay. Demarcus Lawrence with the sack, strip, fumble. How about that? Lions season will come to an end in very disappointing fashion in Dallas. We haven't seen this kind of emotion from you, Dominican. Can you just take us through what you're feeling right now? I mean, honestly, just I didn't expect this. Just what it comes down to. Do you feel like you've left the head, left it all out there the whole season? Is that why you feel you do that? For sure. me right now is embarking on a, a new career and a new place here in Miami with the Dolphins and I'm absolutely excited about it. We have breaking news and big news for Lions fans. Several sources are reporting the Detroit Lions have fired there. General Manager Martin Mayhew and President Tom Luan. This follows the team's one and seven start. If you recall, this comes just about a week after they fired offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi and the offensive line coaches Jeremiah Washburn and Terry Heffernan. But at that point, people were really questioning, did owner Martha Ford go far enough with those firings and would more follow? And today, again, multiple sources reporting that GM Martin Mayhew out along with President Tom Luan. The report is this morning that Calvin Johnson, one of the great wide receiver talents in the history of the National Football League, uh, is going to retire. And it's interesting that Calvin Johnson, with a lot of legs and a lot of plays left, is going to retire. And Barry Sanders, in his prime, with a lot of years left, retired, both from Detroit. What a shock. In both instances, it was a massive waste of talent. Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders, with the Detroit Lions, played for 19 years and had one playoff win. One. Efforts took a major step forward today with the hiring of a new general manager. Yeah, teams hoping that Bob Quinn can bring along some of the success he experienced as part of the New England program. And Bernie's here with this new hire. Uh, he's found some diamonds in the rough. Pretty impressive resume. I would, yeah, you'd think so. At the ripe old age of 39, Bob Quinn is your new general manager of the Detroit Lions. But he has spent the past 15 years learning his craft from the best in the business, the New England Patriots. We've got a still photo of Quinn who's been the Patriots director of scouting since 2012. Before that, he was an assistant. This photo from 2006, it's almost like he's been in the witness protection program because there are almost no pictures of him anywhere. But he got a ringing endorsement from Patriots head coach Bill Belichick that carried a lot of weight. Tonight, the Lions made it official. Bob Quinn is their new general manager. His first course of business will be a decision on head coach Jim Caldwell. Remains to be seen. Do you think he'll blow up the team or just kind of tweak it? Or oh, I think he'd be crazy to blow it up. I yeah. think he's got. He needs a few pieces. And yeah. also, you got to kind of. He'll need a transitional period of getting from where he is now to what mm -hmm. he really wants sure, to be. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think he'd blow it up right away. The uh, game, Mike Tarico, breaking down the brackets, and we'll take a look ahead to tomorrow's wild card matchups. From the 49-yard line. Stafford tonight, 18 of 31 for 205. The big difference, the run game between these two teams. And Matthew will get taken down to the 45 yard line by Michael Bennett. You know, one thing, Chris, is we look at this sack again. It's all coverage sacks. It's really what it is. This offensive line's done a nice job. They're going to get some garbage time sacks here at the end of this thing, but there was coverage down the field, much more so than what the offensive line didn't do. And fourth and 13, nothing to lose. Just go for it. Stafford fires downfield, incomplete. And Seattle will be able to run the clock out. You know, you talk about so much is made of getting the buy in the playoffs and where you are in terms of seeding. You go back to three weeks before the season was ending and Detroit was the number two seed number two 
And Stafford had the finger injury against Chicago. They go to New York and lose to the Giants. They go to Dallas. And if Washington wins last week and beats the Giants, they're out of the playoffs, period. But they get in as the number six seed. You know, but they had a tough stretch there, too. Very. You know, one of the reasons they had that good record is they had not played the Giants or the Cowboys or the Packers yet. So, and all the other teams had in that division. So, tough. Jim Caldwell, though, I, I, I'm telling you, I think they've got something going on. They have to be better, though, stopping the run. They, it's really what cost them the last couple of weeks. And 179 yards for Seattle tonight on the ground. Huge night for Rawls, 161. Sherman pitched the shutout. I don't remember hardly anything going that way. I yeah. mean, basically, once they left him on one side of the field, you can see Matthew Stafford said, to heck with that side. I'll try the other way. Talking uh, at the Seahawk facility the other day, we were meeting with Pete Carroll. The last thing he said to us, he says, I got to get Rawls the ball 20 times. You know, we hear a lot of stuff, and sometimes you half believe it, and sometimes you don't believe it at all. He wasn't fooling. No, he wasn't. And he did it. And the great thing is, is they really were able to do this without putting Russell Wilson in any kind of jeopardy here tonight. A couple of sacks, but no big hits on him. No rushes, just that one kneel down. And the Seattle Seahawks are moving on. And the Detroit Lions go into the offseason. Using his $135 million arm and his legs, Stafford had his team one yard from their first 3-0 start since 2011. 12 seconds left. You can't get tackled short of the end zone here. You can't stop the clock again. But in the NFL, you never know when or how the turning point will occur. Matthew takes the snap, looks left, throws, end zone, caught, touchdown, the Detroit Lions, Golden Tate, they've done it again, they've done it again. These guys are unbelievable. 89 yards in 11 plays, and with eight seconds to go, Golden Tate's got the football in his All scoring plays reviewed, and does he cross the goal line clearly before he's down with possession of the football? Sure looks that way. They're going to review it. They're going to look at it. The defender may have been touching his right shoulder as he was going down. As he caught the ball, his knee was already down short of the goal line. The defender had his hand on the back shoulder of Golden Tate. Poole's hand is on Tate's shoulder. It's going to happen. It's going to be ruled short. We're going to have a 10-second runoff as you're out of timeout. That'll be the game. Okay. So what happens in that situation is if you don't have a timeout left, you're going to get a 10 second runoff. If you have a timeout left, you can you, you can prevent that runoff at the end of the game and give up that timeout. That's a kick from a game-winning touchdown to a touchdown that's called back to a 10-second runoff that has the Atlanta Falcons with a victory and the Lions 18 inches shy of the end zone. Wow. We've seen a lot of things. That's different. This was Bob Quinn's day, Bob Quinn's decision. The Lions GM made it clear he made this call. It was his alone. And this is a moment he's been preparing for for a long time. The first thing Bob Quinn said about firing Jim Caldwell is what you'd expect him to say. I feel like there was a need in uh, change in the leadership of this team. And starting today, I'll be leading that search um, to hire a new head coach for the Lions. The first reason he gave is the reason Lions fans would probably give too. When you look at our record um, over the last couple years since I've been here, you know, we didn't we didn't beat the, beat the really good teams. You know, our record is uh, was above average. Um, 
you know, nine and seven the last two years, but our record against the better teams in the league has not been that good. Bob Quinn said the right things. He was honest. He was confident. When the Lions GM arrived from New England's Super Bowl winning factory, he changed a lot of the environment and the way things are done in Allen Park. But one key aspect that remained was the leader on the field. Now that Caldwell is out, Quinn made it clear today this is his ship. He's steering it. He even addressed the entire Lions team today. Obviously, anytime something like that happens, it's um, disappointing and tough. You know, a guy that you worked really closely with for four years, and, uh, you know, you know the amount of work that he put in and all that. The kind of person he was, it's it's tough, um, you know, to have it in that way. Everybody knows the business, so uh, you know everybody know how we feel about Caldwell, uh, what a great coach he is to us, and a great person, great man. Um, but um, I'm sure he'd be all right though, you know. What I'm saying he been he been on the show before. He this ain't nothing new to him. I think there's games that we could have, would have, and should have won, and we didn't. Um, and you know, you know, this is a results business. This is wins and losses. We can talk about all the individual plays, all the individual players, the staff. We can talk about all that stuff. It comes down to winning football games and winning championships. And Bob Quinn believes there's enough talent in there to have done more in the last two seasons that he's been here. I asked Matthew Stafford, do you believe this is the closest you've ever been to winning? He said, well, I can't review each and every season, but yeah, we're definitely close. Now, players will not have a role in the hiring process. Stafford was in on interviews before Jim Caldwell was hired. And as for hiring someone who would keep Jim Bob Cooter to help the offensive continuity, Quinn said that's not his priority. He wants to find the best head coach and said he's prepared to do so. The Patriots defensive coordinator Matt Patricia is likely to become the Detroit Lions next head coach. Many people have pegged Patricia with the New York Giants, but it sounds at this point in time as if Patricia is likely to wind up in Detroit where he'll be reunited with the former Patriots personnel man Bob Quinn who has been looking for a new head coach. Patricia interviewed last year with the Chargers and Rams, impressed him with his knowledge. We saw what he did last night with the Patriots defense. Defense, and now he is poised to become the next head coach of the Detroit Lions. Look, if you talk to anybody up in New England, what they believe in organizationally is philosophical alignment. That's huge with them to be able to speak the same language between personnel department and coaching staff. This would be a seamless transition, which would put them ahead of the curve right off the bat, be able to address some of the issues as far as the roster on this football team is concerned. And then for, for Patricia in particular, on the defensive side of the ball, he's got some great tools to work with. He'll have to look, then jump over to the offensive side of the football, make sure that they develop a running game. But again, be able to hit the ground running with Bob Quinn right off the bat as far as knowing what kind of profile players they want, what kind of makeup that they want. That's a huge, huge win for them if, in fact, he winds up going there. And they have not uh, it's my sincere pleasure to welcome and introduce the head coach of the Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia. Very excited to be part of this uh, historic and passionate city. Uh, your love for sports, both professionally and collegiate, um, is, is second to none. Oh, and I, I'm going to get comfortable here for a second. Hang on. <laughs> okay, fire away. Simply put, what I saw last night was, in my time in, in, in our city here, I've, I've worked in this city since uh, the beginning of 04. I've lived in the state since 98. That was bar none the single worst opening game by any team I've ever seen, ever, in my 37 years on this planet. That was an out-and-out -out embarrassment. That was disgraceful. And mind you, we're not talking about a, a, a rebuilding team or the Buffalo Bills. You have a 10-year veteran quarterback. You have high-priced players. The NFL gifted you a win, opening up with the Jets, a rookie QB barely old enough to buy a six-pack, at home, at night. And you showed, if you've ever wanted to know what 53 anuses look like, well, every player on this team showed them. I mean, that, that was... It was absolutely... Stunning. There's nothing in the history of this football team that prepares you for that. Not me. And that performance was so cringeworthy, was so... Uh, 
I don't even know if people, the, the, the fans, have the capacity to be embarrassed anymore. Because this organization essentially is a butthole. But it, it, it's just unfathomable to me. But let me, let me take you backwards before we go forwards. Now, look, I gave him benefit of the doubt. Despite speaking to you and trying to clue you in on what's going on, I thought they'd win last night. I admit that. But I'm the guy who, for years, if you're a long-time listener to the show, I never value preseason, right? What did I do this year? I valued preseason. I panicked. I told you guys they look really, 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 really bad. I'm really, really, really worried. We brought up the Burkett piece where I told you, guys, players are telling them this, okay? Training camp is brutal. I've done the shows where I said, hey, you know, the Patriots beat the living hell out of their players. And that's kind of what's going on here. And this team doesn't look to have energy, right? You know, in the last, I don't know, two weeks, how you've heard me say a very dirty word on the air, wizen hunt. How Patricia, if he doesn't get off to a good start, this whole thing could collapse. That he could be wizen hunt, like a guy who gets fired after a year or a year and a half. Guys, there are reasons. And what you saw last night, hey, I, I don't have all the answers, all right? I, I know I'm in a position where it's like, well, wait, if you're so smart, why don't you coach the team? Okay, thank you for that. But here's my point to you. There are things I know. I know football. I know sports. And you listen to the right people. You get the right stuff. I'm telling you this right now. That team went out last night and showed their ass on national television. And what they also showed is they hate this guy. Okay? I'm telling you. You don't come out in week one and quit if you value your coach. You don't come out in week one and not only do you lose. That's not a loss. You got absolutely emasculated on national television. You don't do that if you've bought into the program. You came out against a team that will struggle to win six games, and you allowed them to burn your own building down. Ford Field, empty, eight minutes to go, except for Jet fans chanting J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. In a history of embarrassing moments for the Lions, that ranks in the top five. That scene last night is a top five moment. It was outer worldly. I am telling you right now, it is my belief, Matt Patricia is going to be a disaster here. Okay? A disaster. And I will either be right and no one will remember, and that's fine. I don't do this job for daps. Or I will be wrong, and it will be a, a one of my worst takes of my career where it's like, oh, remember when you didn't like him? I'm telling you right now, Matt Patricia last night looked like a guy in over his head, losing his players, and has no idea what he's doing. Into sports, big move made by the Lions today, and today was, in fact, we're just now about an hour past the trade deadline. Right, and Bernie's here now. Golden Tate is gone, and I don't like it. <laughs> oh, gee. Your fault? Get me a phone quick. <laughs> Call out Dallas. Nobody test me. He's well, a, I, uh, you're not the only one. A lot I of agree. Fans I th loved him. I know? agree. I th he was a big favorite in town. Yep. There have been whispers for the past week. Golden Tate was a hot topic in trade talks. Today is the trading deadline, as you heard. And this afternoon, the Lions did it. They traded him to the Eagles for a third-round draft pick. We've got highlights of Tate. Spent four seasons with Detroit. Let him in receiving each season. He was here. Terrific slot receiver. He told the free press this morning he'd be surprised if he got traded. He's in the final year of his deal. Guess what? What the Lions did was decide they'd rather have a third-round pick instead of Tate for the final nine games of this season because it appeared they weren't going to re-sign him anyway. Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia do not approach this like a fan. Yes. They figured they weren't going to re-sign him for next season, so they did what they could and got what they could for him. And it's a bit surprising considering they're just a game out of first place in the North with nine games still to go. This, that's the most surprising right. part to me. Right. The Snacks-Harrison trade made fans think, oh, Oh, we're in it for the, right oh, now, uh, exactly. and now uh, maybe not till next year. No, uh, and I think that's what happens when you have a general manager and a coach with five-year deals in year one of their 
for yeah. Quinn a new deal, for Patricia the new. This is a big picture. A little more idea. holistic. Correct. Yes, yeah. yeah. All right, more sports coming up from Bernie in a bit. I think Quinn is building this thing, and I think it's the ultimate job security move as well. It tells you Quinn ain't going nowhere. It tells you Patricia ain't going nowhere. They're tied at the hip. They're going to build this thing their way, and if it bombs, guess what? They'll be sharing an Uber to the airport. Bob Quinn talked for 45 minutes. He again showed why he's so valuable to the Lions when he steps in front of the mic. Quinn added comments and some clarity to reports, trades, and events from the past seven months. If he did this a couple times during the season, stories and narratives don't go on for an entire season. There is one major area that cannot be fixed with a press conference. The team's 6-10 and 10 record. Disappointing season for us overall. Uh, on the whole, all of us kind of had high expectations going into this year. Bob Quinn finally talked publicly for the first time since last year's draft. He offered clarity on trading Golden Tate. It was just an, an offer that we really couldn't refuse. He nodded at questions about the team's attempt to make a big trade last offseason. The Rob Gronkowski thing is well documented. Quinn even admitted he was one of many GMs to call Oakland about Khalil Mack. But of the many questions he answered, the one player who was brought up most, his quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford's our quarterback. Um, he will be our quarterback here. This guy loves football. He's competitive. He's talented. We need to do a better job putting better players around him and scheming up things better to use his talent. Just to be clear, how open uh, trade? No, Matthew, Matthew Stafford's our quarterback. It's no secret Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia are good friends. So with his buddy and head coach, Finally with him in Detroit, one of the most revealing sound bites to come from today's press conference was about the brand of football the Lions are playing. I think we, we play a physical brand of football, which before I didn't think that was the case my first year or two. I think this year we drastically improved that. So with his head coach and his brand of football now in place, the step back this year was tough for this fan base to swallow. Is it fair to say that you would have been okay with maybe a step back this year to take two steps, three steps, four steps forward? I'm never looking to take a step back. Um, you know, this is, that's not how I'm wired. This year wasn't a, it was a step back um, record-wise, but in terms of how I'm thinking about building this team and improving it, I never want to take a step back to go two steps forward. Quinn ad addressed questions about Patricia's sexual assault allegations because, again, he had not talked publicly since they resurfaced. Quinn said he found out just days before the public did. And one more about Stafford. He was asked directly if the Lions can win a Super Bowl with him as their QB. Quinn said yes. No Darius Slay at practice for the Lions. He missed the final three quarters of Sunday's loss to the Vikings. So Detroit could be without Slay and Quandre Diggs after the trade with Seattle on Tuesday. Matt Patricia today laid out why the team made the deal. Diggs uh, been a you know part of our team for a while and and you know uh, great person and all that and, and wish him the best of luck, um, but um, you know in the end just trying to do everything we can to to help our team going forward. That's really kind of the bottom line. Certainly uh, those decisions are very difficult. Um, they're not taken lightly. There's certainly things that we try to do to help the team get better in the long run uh, for us. And certainly in a situation where moving forward, hopefully we have some players that can still help us uh, even if we have to or do make a move like we did yesterday. So those other guys are going to have to step up. They're going to have to go play uh, and try to, um, you know, do everything they can to help us to win. But uh, big breaking stories involving the Detroit Lions were that Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn will return next season. And tough news about the future of quarterback Matthew Stafford. 7 Ashes sports anchor Justin Rose joining us now with these latest developments. Justin. Interesting day in Allen Park today. It's supposed to be their off day, but Sheila Ford Hamp, Martha's daughter, admitted today that firing Patricia, quote, would have been the popular choice, the popular decision, and we knew that. But as I say, we're doing what is right for the organization. Today, the team officially announced that both Quinn and Patricia will return for a third season as a duo next year. Patricia expressed his happiness with the decision in a conference call just minutes ago. Official, the Lions have informed Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn they will be back in 2020 with expectation to be playoff contender next season. This is being reported by all the beat writers. I hate these people. Wow. I really We're back! I take no pleasure in being completely right about yesterday's show. Do you believe 
both these guys get to come back, and you know exactly how it went. Martha, you don't understand. Stafford got her. We've had so many injuries. Mo oh, will be better next year. By the way, question. Um, the expectation will be, be a playoff contender? Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia are both totally safe. And they're back. That means they get 50, 60 million in cap space. That means Bob Quinn has the potential to have a top three draft pick. And it's under the guise of they have to be a playoff contender. Now, I, I brought this up to you yesterday, and I'm, I'm going to say this part again. There is nothing more dangerous than a front office and coach who are desperate to keep their job using a high draft pick. Because to be stewards of the organization and do what's right, that doesn't necessarily align with, I got to get a guy who can help me right now. About. Today, the Birds traded third and fifth round picks to the Lions for Darius Slay. The 29-year-old is a three-time Pro Bowler and led the league in picks in 2017. Slay comes to Philly and gets a three-year deal worth $50 million with 30 in guarantees. The move reunites him with defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz, who was his head coach in Detroit. The Eagles now have eight picks in next month's NFL draft. What led to the discord in 2018 with your former coach, Matt Patricia? Um, we was in a team meeting, and um, he showing plays of me, uh, you know, getting caught on in practice, which is cool, which is no problem. Um, you know, just correct me as a player, help me get better, go about my day. Uh, but he added a little more fuel to it, and um, he had posted a picture off my Instagram into the team meeting room and um, told me to stop sucking this man private. So I said, you know, I'm like, what? Um, where I'm from, that don't happen. You know, people just don't say that to folks and be like, you know, cool with it. You know, I got to be like a somebody you don't like. So uh, I took it offensively. Uh, Grover Quinn, he saved me through the whole process, man. Him and uh, Quandre talking me through it. Uh, I had great leadership. Everybody just like, leave it alone. But, uh, shoot, that was real deal. Like, I couldn't, um, couldn't do that. Stafford's got it. Three-man rush for Chicago. Stafford loads the throws. And yes! Oh, he dropped it. Oh, you don't. Oh, no. no. DeAndre Swift dropped it. It was a touchdown in his hands. Oh, my gosh. You know, before we get into the game, obviously just, uh, you know, we've got a lot to be uh, thankful for here, you know, health, family. So I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I'm just really appreciative of my family, my wife, my kids. My wife does a lot behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, from that standpoint, uh, you know, I appreciate her a lot. So, um, you know, obviously the game wasn't how we wanted it to go. And, uh, you know, we didn't play well enough. And, and you know, those situations that come up, we got to do a better job in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not – not good enough, and uh, we know that. we got to go play better. So, um, you know, we'll just take a couple questions and, and kind of go from there. Justin. Matt, the, um, the belief is hard work pays off. Um, we know you guys put in the work, so when, when it doesn't pay off the way you expect it to, what is the, the level yeah, of frustration? I mean, I think, you know, hard work, um, you know, is also perseverance. You know, I think it's uh, guys that are here um, put in a lot of hard work and, and persevered through a lot to get here. So we got to just keep pushing uh, from that standpoint. It's, there's never an easy fix. It's never a magic wand. It's, you know, it's hard work. It's what it is. But, um, you know, from that standpoint, we know that when we put the hard work in and it doesn't uh, come out the way we want it to, um, you know, we just got to stay firm and we got to um, keep pushing. Give Houston credit. You know, it's a good ball club. They got a lot of really good players over there. You know, they played well. They've been playing well here the last several games. So, um, you know, they played better than we did today. And, and you know these these questions are going to come up as, as they have kind of all season, but uh, this this does drop you to four and seven. Um, the the playoff picture is is looking uh, bleak with the ultimatum from ownerships. What what is your thoughts concerns about your your job um, moving forward the rest of the season? 
I mean, my thoughts are really just with the team here today and, and what, you know, we were trying to do here today. Um, it doesn't go beyond that. It's what I focus on. I focus on the team. I focus on those guys that are that, that go out on that field, those guys that are in that locker room, and uh, try to give them everything I can to give them a chance to go be successful. So um, that's the focus. That never changes. It is what it is. And, uh, you know, so. All right. I appreciate that. Do, do you, just to be um, blunt, do, do you expect to be coaching this team next week at this point? Yeah, I mean, again, I focus one day at a time. That's uh, that hasn't changed. So we'll focus on today and, and go from there. What is, what is your schedule now? Did, did you meet with Sheila or Bob after the game already? If not, when do you do something like that? Yeah, um, you know, I always keep my schedule with with ownership and and obviously Bob and and anybody else. I keep that private. Um, what I just finished doing was with the players. So that's really kind of where I was at. All right, and then the turnovers today. I mean, obviously that was you know quite the rush of turnovers, three and eight plays. I think it was. How do you recover from something like that? How do you explain something like that when they happen like that? Well, I mean, you know, we obviously know that the turnovers are a big part of this game. We can't have them. But, um, you know, thought we went out and responded on, on one level good. Got the turnover right back. That's always good to see. But uh, we know we got to do better uh, than that. The ball is the most important thing. Thank you. Hey, Matt. Uh, um, thanks for your time. Um, you've been facing job questions now basically every day uh, for a few weeks. What What's the personal toll been like for you? just to deal with the, the scrutiny that you're under? Yeah. Um, you know, just try to, we just try to stay focused on uh, on what's happening here inside these walls. And that's what we focus on. So, um, like I said, um, you know, try to answer it the best way I can. But honestly, I just, you know, I get around the players and I get around the other coaches and, and I do what I love to do, which is go coach football. So uh, that's really where I stay. I have a little bit of a hard, hard time hearing you still, but, um, uh, I'm just curious, where do you feel like you've gotten better this season? Your, your team has gotten better over the course of the season. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, it's hard to come off of a game like this and, and you know, try to figure out what was better uh, from that aspect of it. But I think that there are things in there that are been consistent and things that are good uh, that we're, you know, happy with. But obviously, the inconsistencies of the things that are bad, uh, whether we get them fixed one week and then they show up two weeks later or, uh, you know, they've been bad for a couple weeks in a row. That's the that's the stuff that we got to, you know, we got to get turned around. Thank you, man. Um, well, you know, do me a favor, just kind of sit up and just like have a little respect for the process. Every day you come in and ask me questions and you just kind of like, you know, give me this. But I mean, like, just, just be a little respectful. Just I'm asking just to be a little respectful in this whole process. OK, so ask me a question professionally and I'll answer it for you. Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Lions head coach Matt Patricia and GM Bob Quinn are out in Detroit. The Lions have fired both of them after the Lions' 41-25 loss on Thanksgiving to Houston. Lions 4-7 and seven thus far this season. Matt Patricia in his third season with Detroit, 13-29-1. Clearly not getting it done this season, allowing the third most points per game, nearly 30 per game, as the Lions fire head coach Matt Patricia and GM Bob Quinn. Okay, we will start with Mike O'Hara for the first question. Okay, uh, Mrs. Hamp, but uh, just I wonder what, uh, obviously you didn't like what was going on there. I wonder how much the last five days, the loss to Carolina, the loss to Houston, when you really had a chance to maybe at least mathematically stay in the playoff race, if, if that was the last straw, really. Um, honestly, yes. Uh, you know, 10 days ago, we looked like we had a good chance to be playoff bound. And, you know, both of those games were extremely disappointing. And um, uh, it just seemed like the path going forward wasn't what we wanted it to be. So, yes, we thought this was a good time to make the change. And as you look to the next chapter here, um, is it important to have somebody come into place who understands the, the franchise's history and knowing that, um, you know, just everything that comes along with, with the Detroit Lions and trying to turn it around in a way that they can't ignore the past, but it, almost embrace it and move forward? We can't hide our past, that's for sure. Um, but I think, you know, uh, I'm very dedicated to turning this ship around and really making a, a difference. And, and hopefully, you know, we won't have to look back very much. We'll just look forward. I mean, it's uh, an incredible, incredible opportunity. I want to thank everybody for for taking interest in this uh, press conference in the announcement. Um, 
I was just thinking about this, that, you know, you never know where life takes you. And sometimes life is about timing. And this is the time in my life where this is the perfect opportunity. And I had a chance to talk to Rod and to Sheila and to uh, understand and share the vision of what they picture the lions moving forward. And it's kind of along my core beliefs on everything regarding life and football. And so when you have that type of alignment, I think that's something that we are uh, committed to create. And the one pride thing uh, to me goes beyond the building, obviously, obviously in the building, but the one pride thing is embracing uh, Detroit, the city of Detroit, the fans of Detroit. It's something I think that I still identify with, I felt a part of, and uh, for uh, lack of another word, it's really, really good to be home in that regard. And I, I, I have a, a vision of uh, that matches exactly what Rod and Sheila envisioned, and that's the only way this could work because we're completely uh, in sync of the direction of the culture of the building and something to be proud of for everybody that's a Lions fan. Detroit parted ways, the Ford family, Rod Wood, everybody, with the Patriot way. They're now investing in what's worked for the Rams, and I say that with confidence because Brad Holmes has worked his entire 18 years in the NFL for the St. Louis and now Los Angeles Rams. He started in 2003 as an intern for the Public Relations Department. He quickly moved to the team's scouting department, ascending to his current role before taking this one as the team's college scouting director. Holmes oversaw the Rams' last eight drafts. The last four, they didn't have a first-round pick, but he was part of an organization that has competed most recently in a Super Bowl and playoff stretch behind Jared Goff, who was the number one overall pick and a team that is still alive in the postseason right now. The feedback from around the league since the news became official, and really since Holmes has been a candidate for GM for multiple spots, has been overwhelmingly positive and has pointed to the way his detailed discussions have centered on what he did as a scout with his reports. Lions owner Sheila Fordhamp said in a statement, quote, it was critical that we find the right person to fit our vision for this team. It was evident early on that Brad is a proven leader who is ready for this opportunity. Ram in terms of the purpose and the vision here, it's not complicated. You know, it'll be through a collaborative approach. We will build a winning and inspired culture to serve the best football product to this great city of Detroit so we can compete for championships on a consistent basis. We've got some more breaking news this morning on a Wednesday. The Detroit Lions reportedly hired Dan Campbell as their head coach. ESPN reporting it is a six-year deal. He's a assistant in the NFL, former player, headed to Motown to take over the Detroit Lions team that finished 5-11 last year, hiring Matt Patricia. Record was not well for him after taking over for Jim Caldwell. Here's the crew resume for Dan Campbell. Has some interim head coach experience with the Miami Dolphins. I mentioned his playing experience. Ten seasons in the NFL as a tight end, including being a Super Bowl champion. Here's what I do know is that this team is going to take on the identity of this city. All right. And the city's been, been down and it found a way to get up. All right, it's found a way to uh, overcome adversity. All right, and so this team's going to be built on, uh, we're going to kick you in the teeth. All right, and, and when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. And when you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. All right, and we're going to stand up. And then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. All right, and on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up. And then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're going to be the last one standing. All right, that's going to be the mentality. All right, and we're going to learn that any loss that we take, we're going to make sure we feel the full pain of it and not go numb to it and learn from it and not to want to taste it again. All right, we're going to be competitive every game. I can't sit up here and guarantee wins and losses, and I, I just can't do it. Um, but I'll guarantee you this, man, these guys are going to fight and they're going to scratch and claw and they're going to be something this city's proud of because they're going to take on the identity of this city.
Mullins takes the shotgun snap. He's back. Mullins looking. Pressure comes. Stepping up. Looking. Throwing deep downfield. It is picked up by the Lions. Intercepted. Coming back the other way. Ifatu Malafonwu. This is going to be over. Lions are going to win it. Lions are bringing the NFC North title back to Detroit. The fourth interception of the day delivers for the Detroit Lions. Taylor Decker, longest tenured Lions player, Lions player, man. You guys, first time since 1993, division champions, man. What does it mean for you? Oh, I'm going to try to hold it together for you. I'm emotional, man. We've been through a lot of battles. Um, it's been a long time coming, but it, feel, it feels great, man. It feels great to just, you know, dig ourselves out of that hole that we were in and to become a team that, you know, people respect and, and you know, it's just cool to play meaningful games in December, man, and it's cool that all of our, our goals and everything's right in front of us, and I couldn't be happier, man. I love this group. I love these coaches, um, the whole organization, and, and the city of Detroit, man. Uh, they deserve it. They deserve it. Whenever you do something like what we just did, it's special. It don't matter, man. And it don't matter how many you win in a row. They're special. But I can tell you this, when you're part of the organization, and it's been 30 years 30 since you won a fucking championship. Yeah. It's special, man. And these guys have been fucking dying for it and waiting for it, man. It's for you, baby. This first one's for you. The rest of the people. Until then, enjoy, baby. Hey, it's been a long fucking time coming. And it feels fucking good. Hey, you know what? Now everybody fucking respects us and everybody better fucking fear us. No Let's go, Lions on three. One, two, three. Lions! Yeah. Let's get it, man! NFC North Champion! Woo! Got my boy in the cut with me. Yes, sir, you already know what it's talking about, man. We here, man. Minnesota take over, man. Let's go! Let's go! I'm gonna start skill. Where is that? All right. Hey, where my shirt at? Where my shirt? I'm trying to find my shirt. I don't got no shirt. I'm trying to. I want a shirt. They took all the shirts, bro. I ain't got no shirt. Hot, crazy. But where the shirts at? That's crazy. I ain't got no shirt. That's okay, though. I'm a champion in my heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go. 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 Go